Welcome to what's new in Reaper 6.29. There's a couple of really great new features in this and a bunch of little bug fixes that we're gonna go through today. Let's jump into it. And before we get started, if you wanna support this channel, there's several different ways you can do this. On the website, there's a tip jar. We also have a Patreon and on YouTube, there's a join membership option. These are great additional ways to support the channel, but just watching is very much appreciated and helps us out a lot. And onto the change log, the first change here on my list, actions rename envelope clear envelope to envelope clear or remove envelope. And that is just to kind of clarify what is happening when you use this action. So envelope clear or remove envelope. So when you have an envelope with some data points into it, and you use this button here, clear envelope, it brings up this window asking if you want to remove the envelope completely. Uh, when you press yes, no will clear all the points, but bring it back to default and keep that envelope there and cancel will just close this window. So the action list, envelope clear or remove envelope, will do the same thing. So if we run that, brings up this window. If we choose no, that just clears it, run it a second time that will just remove it. Automation items, action to create new automation item uses razor edit areas if they exist. Let's bring back that envelope and let's make a razor edit area right there. And if we right click and go to automation items, insert automation item, that's going to use the razor edit area. The same as if we had a time selection, right click, insert automation item, where it would use the time selection. And so I'm actually gonna bump up razor edits in my list to make it come a little bit earlier in this video uh, so that we can talk about the new envelope editing behaviors. There's new mouse modifiers to expand or compress envelope range relative to average value or toward top and bottom. They've also done some tweaks to ensure that pasted media items remain grouped and pasted automation items remain pooled across tracks. So let's just start off with some envelopes. So I'm gonna draw in an envelope here on this volume envelope. I'm gonna put a razor edit over this. My colors look a little different just because I've customized them. Um, but if you look at my mouse cursor, there's a new mouse cursor. And if I drag this, I can manipulate this volume envelope here. Let's actually duplicate this track. And so I've got two, two tracks with volume automation. And I put a razor edit around both. If I use an alt click, I can remove the media lane from my razor edit selection. And using this new mouse cursor, by clicking on the envelope points, I can adjust multiple tracks of automation at the same time, which is pretty cool and not something you can really do without razor edits. We can also kind of do a tilt on the automation if you grab it from the sides, which is pretty cool. And that's definitely not something you can really do uh, normally. Let's look in mouse modifiers and see if there's anything else here. So for razor edit envelope area, we've got left drag, move or tilt envelope vertically, expand or compress envelope range and expand or compress envelope range toward top bottom. By default, it was just moving up and down or tilting from the sides. If we hold down the command key or the control key on Windows, we can expand or contract that range. If we hold down shift command, or shift control, that's gonna be a kind of a slight tweak to that. So this is holding command only, and this is holding shift command. So the difference there is if you're towards the top, it's going to compress the higher uh, values more than the lower values. And if you're towards the bottom, it's going to compress uh, those higher values more relative to the bottom. So quite interesting, not something that, definitely not something that was easy to do with normal envelopes and definitely not across several tracks, several items all at once. I could even add in another razor edit area here and do the same thing, and it will apply to all of those at once. So I'm doing a Command-Shift 
on that. And it's doing all of those items at once across different tracks. They don't all have to be the volume uh, envelopes. They could be panning or effects automation. And wherever you have those razor edits um, active, that's what it'll apply to. Pretty cool to have this. Not a ton of options in here, just those three really, um, but it is cool to have those options at all. That's it for razor edits, but that's a really great addition to razor editing uh, functions. Without razor edits, you have been able to e edit envelope segments and expand and contract envelope data in that way, but not across multiple tracks or across multiple different um, effects parameters and things like that. So that's a great addition. Okay, a couple more small things. So effects improve embedded effects update frequency when mouse editing. So when you have an effect added into the track control panel and you're moving it with a mouse, it's just going to have a faster update frequency and be a lot more responsive. For Mac OS, they've renamed the ARM build to reaper-arm.app and the Intel 64-bit to reaper.app. For most users, that's not going to really change anything. Just keep in mind that uh, when you're installing this version, over an old version, you might actually have to delete the old version, the .app file, from your applications folder or from your portable install. Because the file name has changed, um, you know, it wouldn't automatically overwrite like in previous versions. But this is a change that has been uh, coming for quite a long time. You know, it, it should have been just reaper.app for a very long time because, you know, 64-bit Intel was the default for the last, I don't know, five years or something. Um, ever since, uh, what was it, Sierra, I think it was, or High Sierra, uh, every app has to be 64-bit on Mac. So, you know, it just makes sense. Let's take a look at the Media Explorer. And this changelog says, Media Explorer add option to preview through track named Media Explorer Preview. Support adding additional user-specifiable metadata display columns. Definitely gonna look at the first one. So let's add in the track. And then let's go to the view menu and bring up the Media Explorer. And in the Media Explorer, when you click on the routing button, there's this option, play through first track named Media Explorer Preview or first selected track. The default is just to play through your, your main stereo outs, but you can have it play through a specific track. So right now I have a track that is unnamed and um, I'm just going to get a loop file and I'll play that. And you can see that playing through the first selected track there. If I make a new track and have that selected, play another file, it's playing through there. By default, if I have this on stereo out, even if we look in the master track, so I'll play a file again, you don't see it in the tracks. If we look in the, mass, in the mixer, you're not seeing it, but it's coming through the speakers. So that's because it's going out the main out completely bypassing the mixer. So what's new is that we can just name a track, a specific name, Media Explorer Preview, and the Media Explorer will always play through that track. And we can set that up in our template. We can even hide the track, and it will just always play through that, which allows us to do things like add a compressor so that our, our you know, we, we have a very consistent level playing through there or any other sorts of effects that you want to have on there is all possible. So we're just going to uh, check that box for playing through the Media Explorer preview. We're gonna name this track. And as long as you name that track right, it should play through that. And so I can put on something like a brick wall limiter and make sure that it doesn't pass minus 5.9 and I won't add any additional level. And let's play that. and the volume is lowered because of that brick wall limiter. So I'm bringing up a old project to show this, uh, this new option for the project bay, show bypass slash offline status for effects that are unavailable. So this is an old project where I've got four different synths that aren't installed on this computer. So if I hit okay, and I go to view project media effects bay, and I look at any of these, I can see that they're unavailable, and uh, if I bypass one of them, we'll see bypassed plus unavailable. So if you're opening up an old project and it's unavailable, but you see that it's bypassed, then 
um, it's probably safe to remove it and you maybe don't worry, need to worry about reinstalling that plugin. It's a pretty minor change, but it's helpful. Up next, we have some changes to the ruler. There are new options to display the region name when the region start is off screen and an option to hide the region number if the region is named. I've got some regions in here and if I zoom in and the start of the region is invisible, I can still see that region name. And if I scroll over here to the next region, and now once I'm into the verse region, I can still see that it says verse. And if I jump ahead to the next one, pre-chorus, and moving forward, I can still see that pre-chorus is there and there's these, there's these two arrows indicating that, you know, what I'm seeing here is not the start of the region. I think that's super helpful. If we right click in an empty area of the ruler, we've got ruler layout and two options here, display region number, even if region is named. So let's uncheck that. So these regions are named, the number disappears. If I add in another region with no name, we'll see just region number five. And then the other option, ruler layout, uncheck display region numbers when region edge is not visible. And that brings it back to how it was. And you can see that my verse region uh, name disappeared. And we'd have to scroll all the way to the start to see that what region is actually there. So again, ruler layout, display region number slash name when region edge is not visible. We can enable that. We can always see which region is playing uh, in there. Such a simple change, but I think that's a very helpful change. They've updated the Super 8 MIDI controlled plugin. Uh, I'm not gonna get too far into this. I'll just read the change log for this. Allow drag and drop of samples to channels. So we can drag a sample from the Media Explorer and drop it into the sampler. And it automatically starts playing. And uh, let's do, yeah, stop. I think it's been over five years since I've last looked at Super 8. I just pretty much forget everything about it. But I've had someone offer to uh, do a video about Super 8 um, in the next month or so. And so that should be pretty cool. And, and, and I'm excited to relearn what I know about uh, Super 8 and see how much it's evolved in the past five years. On the surface, this seems like a great addition. Um, I think before you had to play in each sound, um, but now being able to drop in pre-recorded as well as recording your own things, how could that not be a great addition? So uh, stay tuned for more Super 8 features. And now I think the most important change here is the new plugin resurround pan. So this will be found in the Kakos folder. And this is kind of like a new and improved resurround plugin. Let's just open them both up so you can see them side by side and what's changed here. So the old plugin is still there. It was still getting updates, I think even in the last update. But as you can see, it's quite a bit different and there's a huge uh, difference in the way that you use it. So this is just a um, two-dimensional uh, box for controlling inputs and outputs. You can do some fun things like a one-in, four-out matrix where I've used this to control um, guitar signal going into four different cabinet simulations. And that was a pretty neat way of, of using that, but it's definitely not the intended way of using it. But this new version adds in this nice new UI where you can still move around the pucks for your, your input sounds, your left and right input sounds, and point them towards the speaker. And the further the pucks are away from the speaker, the quieter they are. Then we can also rotate the room in 3D. And we can take this and we can hold down the Alt key. And we can, if we're in, in this view, an Alt drag will change its height. And if we're in this view, uh, we can just drag up and down to change that. So Alt kind of toggles the, the movement between up and down or left and, or yeah, left and right. There's various different modes. We can change which, uh, which view we're looking at. So here's the front wall and these are the sides and back wall, overhead, uh, the reverse angle. There are several different preset speaker configuration. So it's gonna to default to stereo. We've got quadraphonic, quadraphonic with Sempty, octophonic, 
5.1, surround 7.1, 7.2, 7.4. We've got Oro with 13.1 speakers, and here's how that looks. Pretty cool. And again, you can choose however many inputs you want. So let's just do a mono source here. So set the input channels to one, and I can move this sound around in 3D space very easily. So I can move it forward and backwards, left, right, and up and down. And you can choose exactly where, uh, where in the room that sound will come from, provided that the physical connections from your audio interface into all those speakers is correct. Really, this is just a, a way to interact with the different levels and panning required to uh, simulate a, a room setup like this. You can also make a custom setup. So going to custom speakers, you can do something like 30 speakers and it just puts them all around in a room. Seems kind of insane, but you know, 30 speakers in a room is not impossible or anything. So um, that is pretty cool. I don't think you can actually move any of the speakers. Before we move on from this, I will show you a couple more things. So I'm gonna go back to stereo and I'm gonna do two sounds. And so we've got left and right here. I'm gonna put them right here. You can right drag to marquee select. And as you move them, you can have them invert certain uh, parameters. And that's these buttons down at the bottom. So we've got X, Y, and Z invert. So right now the X on the second channel is inverted. So as I move left and right uh, with the panning, it flips. And if I uncheck that, so they're linked together, they're going to move the same amount between left and right, forward and backwards. Uh, we can flip the X and the Y, and so they're moving, as one moves forward, the other moves backwards, as one moves left, the other moves right. And so that also works with automation. So I'll just go into right mode, press play, and I'll move these around. And so I can do this spinning automation of two different sound sources uh, within a 3D space. And I've just automated all of that very quickly by dragging in here. I'm not an expert on surround sound. I've never done a mix in surround. Um, it's, yeah, no interest in setting up my studio for surround or anything like that. Anyone that's already working in surround already knows how great this addition is to Reaper um, and all the difficulties there were with the previous uh, version of Resurround. So I'm just kind of showing this off to show that it exists and some of the new features. Um, but yeah, there's not really any way I can demonstrate it beyond that or really explain all the details of everything involved here uh, just because I'm not, uh, I'm not a surround mixer. One more thing about this before we move on. If we open up the effects chain, and so I take um, resurround pan and I right click, show embedded UI in TCP. That, that actually puts that uh, right there in the TCP. And so we can control, uh, right now I've got automation on here, so I'll have to bypass all that automation. But we can control these dots. We can still marquee select, which is awesome. And so we've got a surround panner on the track. And that is something that people have been wanting for probably a decade. So it's still going to depend on how many track channels you have. So for 5.1, you want to set this to six. If you have a stereo um, audio file on the track, you want to set this uh, input mode to two. If it's a mono, set it to one. Uh, quad, set it to four. And yeah, you can do a lot of stuff right from the TCP without having to open up the uh, plugin UI. A really powerful, awesome addition to Reaper. I think a lot of people are going to like this plugin a lot more than the previous Resurround plugin. And, uh, and it might even bring more users to Reaper. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you missed any of the previous update videos, there's going to be a playlist linked below and uh, at the end card. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs>